Welcome to a new teardown video. This time it's scope time. <laughs> I got a lot of really funny old scopes from all my friendly sponsors. And this one is from 1965. At least this is what is written in the manual that I found online. So it will be plus minus some years for this particular unit. And it is a one channel scope. And uh, it actually got some features that I haven't seen before. Look at this calibration output. Look how you can change the output voltage all the way to 40 volts. Really? That I haven't seen before. The time base, well, this is quite normal. This one I haven't figured out yet from the front panel what that is doing. The gain, so we got two knobs. One is times one and it goes all the way to times five. I guess this is some speed for the time base, right? But what is this one doing then? A, a shift or is it what exactly is this doing? So I hope this is working so I can figure this out. Trigger should be fairly easy. This one should be the level. And then I can select from internal plus and minus. External, that will be this one. And then external, what is that? Minus 20, what? I don't know. This one is not working. I'm not able to move this switch at all. I really tried. So we need to look into that as well. This is the back side where we can see this is Marconi Instruments Oscilloscope Type TF2203. Serial number. Just too bad they didn't write the year or the age or anything. So this will be the back side of the CRT. But look at that. 12 volt battery. And this is the mains input. Mains selector. And that. So it's running off mains. It's running on battery. And you can also charge the battery. So you can change between those three features. This I am a little bit worried about. What is that? A cathode? Is this a fuse? What is this? No clue. Why would you want to disconnect the cathode? This sounds a little bit dangerous. Hmm. Hmm. Unfortunately, there is something loose inside this one. So when I move it around, I can hear some loose screws or something. So I really need to open it first. There is no way I'm going to stick this into the mains and blow it all up. Of course, this is from 1965, so it's really, really old. So somebody was in here before. Just took out a few screws here. Should be able to. Ooh, yo, 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 what is this? So there's a dead bug. <coughs> Those wires are nearly falling off. What are they doing in here? Oh, maybe this is. I don't know what that is. This we need to look look into before we can power it up. Really, really nice. I briefly looked uh, through the manual that I found on the internet, and there was a tube hidden somewhere. Yes, there it is. <laughs> that is so cute. So it's a hybrid again. See? Transistors and all that stuff. 
only a few transistors. I guess this will be the time base. Yes, that is the time base knob right here. And that will be fine tuning all of uh, all the different timing components. We find all the resistors and stuff down there. Mm-hmm. That is a super, super cute. Fantastic. Let's open the other side and see what that is. So far, two screws and some nuts and washers fell out. So I guess that will be the screws here somebody took out. But for some reason this is not coming off anyway. Got a little bit of transistors and capacitors and stuff here. I think this will be a power supply and high voltage section, focus and all that stuff. This is of course the mains transformator. And this is the time base. So that will be all the time base components. Really? How accurate is stuff like that? So, this will be time base oscillator and stuff, trimmers for the different timing. Look at that. This resistor is swollen or mel melted. Here is a really cute transistor, germanium transistor. No, it's the diode. It's a germanium diode. Look at that. Transistors that were looking really funny back in the good old days. What is that? Is that in a socket? No. So this will be, of course, the input amplifier board and not the time base. So the input amplifier and all the different um, voltage um, ranges. You need trimmer capacitors over the voltage divider resistors so you can fine tune for higher frequencies. This one goes to 15 megahertz. And here we got the power supply capacitor, I guess. I don't know what that is doing. This one is looking a little bit weird. Is this a fuse of some sort? Also, those will be the battery connections. And this one is the red one. From the outside, this is the positive 12 volt and it goes directly to chassis. All right, so that is something to to worry a little bit about. If you look about look look at this, see here and here. So I think it's possible to mount a battery in this hole, so you can actually have a battery inside this unit. So it's all, yeah, one compact service unit. I don't know what that is. This is connected to this cathode connector on the back. And there's a resistor, maybe you can, I don't know, measure the cathode current or whatever. So what are these, those wires doing? And why is this looking like, I don't know what kind of job that is doing. And there is a connector here, a really weird connector for that cathode stuff. So that is a little bit, I'm a little bit afraid of that. Here we can see some power supply components the transistors well, those look really big and and powerful yeah that would be some high voltage resistors that's obviously for all this uh, focusing and high voltage yeah nasty stuff so well when now all the loose components are out we should be able to power this up and see if there is any kaboom in this one. 
All right, I'm actually plugging this thing in. So we got mains voltage on. I put all the dials in the center position and uh, connected the calibration output to this input. Yeah, I think this should be more or less okay to get a picture if it's working or if it's not, or if you're gonna see the kaboom or the smoke or what is going to happen. Are you ready? Duh. Not that ready. Nothing happens. Oh no, shit. What a disappointment. Hey. I just checked all the fuses and I think this mains connector is a little bit loose. What kind of a funny connector is that? And it's so black and corroded. So maybe this is why we got no voltage. I will try and move this a little bit. Also, this wire is like really, really loose. Ooh, that's probably where the problem is. I was also trying to move this one a few times back and forward. And then I saw this pretty cool design. Then you just swap it around and screw it in. <laughs> Don't you just love it? Of course this is how you do it. So good. I found one little bug. <laughs> this is just absolutely dangerous. So this wire was just one big disconnect. And that is why it didn't boot up. I don't know. This cannot be approved for today. So now the mains cable has been repaired and we can turn on the mains nothing happens here so we turn this on are you guys ready mm. oh i got light 28 watts 27 i hear sound let's try and turn off the light here I hear something. I don't know if this is good or bad. Where is the picture? Where is the... Ooh, this is... I clearly hear some... I don't see anything. Where is the beam? Hey. Can you hear there's something saying we? What do we do here? Auto AC. Where's my beam? Or where is the kaboom? Nope. Nothing. There's definitely. I was hoping for. At least a little bit. But I see nothing. Hey. So those are all the voltages I've been measuring in the power supply. And as you can see, VT no, VT2 is not able to pull current. So that P and P transistor is not able to raise the voltage on R12 and that means VT1 is not able to control the drive. So that is what I'm think, uh, thinking. I'm going to change uh, both of these uh, transistors and see what happens because there is no response when I change um, 
uh, we have one up and down this voltage is unchanged so that means this one is not able to to deliver a little bit of current and raise this voltage turn this off and then this this uh, circuit or those two resistors they will then turn on this transistor and now we'll have more output so the output uh, we got at the moment is only uh, delivered uh, through the minimum resistor that is here right so everything here this one is fully on this one is fully off so that is what is happening so I changed the transistors here and now I'm able to get much more voltage output and obviously also using a lot more input power look at this fuse Ooh, hot fuse huh and also there is a the serious resistor for the regulator it is right there it should be seven and a half ohms and that one is running 176 celsius so that is the main problem this reveals that almost nothing i will turn it off almost nothing goes the right way that means through this pnp the pre-regulator the linear regulator because almost everything goes via the minimum load or the minimum power just to get it started and uh, there's clearly something wrong with, with a shorted power supply something is overloaded uh, really really nothing seems to be working in this one so i'm so sorry but i'm not going to waste any more time and energy it was not going to be an ultra fast ultra easy peasy fix but i had at least had uh, a nice evening of fun playing around with this because it could have been easy but it was not so i'm not going to bother anymore and hopefully somebody else would like to continue playing with this one otherwise it is going to the bin or a swap for something more fun. See you. Thank you for watching.